speaking of making these choices, a few words on gear options, on hardware options. So you need to look at your requirements. Is it point-to-point -point links or is it access, user access networks you are building? Most importantly, probably your financial budget here, not your link budget, but the money you have for it. And almost needless to say, it'll all be about trade-offs. You can't get very cheap, very powerful, very fast, lives forever, all in one device. You will have to make trade-offs between the two things. The main things to look for in your gear is, of course, the compa compatibility with the users, that what the users have is what your access network can provide. If it's a point-to-point -point link, of course, the two ends must match each other. Um, you want a certain lifetime, a, a quality, hardware quality, and very importantly, especially for larger, for example, campus networks, you want some management, some manageability of devices. We'll talk about that in much detail in a later talk. The Gear options, and this is just a few brand names. They'll change over time. They will be different depending on where you are. It literally goes from the $10 range, the cheapest I can buy online today. Typically, Chinese sources, home user equipment, $10, $20 buys me an access point. On the upper end, enterprise wireless very, very heavy quality with management uh, servers and all of this goes to thousands of dollars per access point. This is the range in which I have to position myself. And the question is, is there a best choice? And we'll come to that. If somebody gives me $20 and say, hey, can you build an access network for 100 people? Uh, but you only get those $20. I can probably do that. I can build a home access point, 20 bucks. I would probably think of giving it some self-built do-it-yourself antennas. And that would enable 100 people to read mail, do some browsing. It won't be super fast, but I could be giving a video presentation over that network that would still work. Um, not 100 people could see it over such a network at the same time, because then I'd be hitting the limits, but it would work. So a 20 year old standard access point, I can still get them, will do this job. Connectivity for 100 people for $20. Of course, it's unmanaged for this price. I've only installed one, I haven't thought about the larger network yet. Now, given that the range is so wide that I can go from literally from $10 to thousands of dollars, is there a best choice? Um, at the NSRC, among the people working for the NSRC, we believe there is a good sort of midfield option. There is equipment which gives you some management capabilities, not the heavy enterprise control servers, but something in between. And it gives you good radio quality, reasonable software management platform. And while we're not affiliated in any way, we do think that Ubiquity products in particular for end user access Unify is a good recommendation. Always keep in mind, you also have to think about what can you get distribution and support and availability to begin with for in your specific place. 
but for many places we find that Ubiquity Unify is quite a good choice. There's product lines for end user access, the Unify system, and there is various point-to-point -point links on ISM Wi-Fi bands as well as proprietary extensions to that. For the end user access, it's of course important that you are on standard Wi-Fi because else your users won't be able to connect to it. For point-to-point -point links, that's not an argument. If As long as both ends of your point-to-point -point are compatible, you can be on any other standard if you so wish. Here's the Unify access points, the point-to-point -point we see here, Air Max and Air Fiber systems. So these are some of the possibilities. And they come in different classes, price grades too, uh, different speeds, uh, different frequencies. There's a lot to choose from.